Okay, okay, okay. I just heard my sister-in-law going, okay, okay, okay. She's going to get going. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, what about my day? Oh, I did it again, didn't I? What about my day yesterday? Oh, man, it's like... I saw something. True Father really had all these great things to say. I teach this and that. And I saw one where, you know, you get up in the morning, no matter how you feel, and the first thing you do is you start with a prayer and a thought of, you know, heavenly parents, this and that. And then you go through the whole day and you just keep that up like that. How could you have a bad day? Uh, I don't know. I guess it could still happen. But again, huh? if you're guided by spirit world and what the best that there is, which is our creator, then how could you have a bad day? Right? It's all about, okay, well, let me see. What am, have I been given to restore certain things? Or... Or just become so full of yourself that, well, you know what? Let's see. I'm so, so anchored in the heart of God. He's within me as I am within him. Huh? Okay. Her. Huh? Parents. To the child and vice versa. Then what could go wrong? Or... How could not things turn out exactly how you want it to? So I came down yesterday and I said to my brother, I said, are you ready to go to town? Because we needed feet. Okay. So I had to go. I had to take care of things and and uh, needed to get some things from the store. Again, did I really? Well, if I want to please everybody around me, if not just... <laughs> wild vegetables and <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, he says yeah 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 he says how about two o'clock it was raining he says yeah he says you know what I said yeah that sounds good and it was about noon and he says yeah it's gonna be raining all day and I th we're gonna take my car his car had some problems uh and uh so taking his car is like this you know or taking a chance or whatever you know Okay, I said, I said, I said are you sure that your car is going to be, no, but it's a big car, so, and it's all covered, so, <laughs> yeah, the feed we need to get, all the groceries, uh, yeah, so, it would be, yeah, in case it rains, or it's going to be, it's going to rain, right? I said, you know what, I said, by the time we leave here, until we're done with it, I bet you that the skies are going to be clear, it won't be raining, it will be fine, right? so, yeah, but, you know, yeah, let's just take my car. And I said, okay. And he said, I said, well, I guess we'll just be prepared. I said, I'm going to make sure that I put my good walking shoes on in case. And and uh, and he's laughing. I said, well, we won't have to do that because I will be. I said to him, I said, I will be your passenger. So I know we're going to get from point A to point B and from point B to point, B, point A just fine. I am so full of myself, aren't I? Well, we left here and it was not raining. It wasn't raining until we got back. Then about 30 minutes later, it started to rain. <laughs> Again. The car ran like perfect. Right? Not only this, but there's one thing about my brother-in-law. He has, uh, he likes to speed. Yeah, he's probably got more speeding tickets than I know of anyone. And uh, trips he had to make to other states to never have an accident, though. But the, the, the trips he had to make even to other states to <laughs> God, take care of speeding tickets is insane. Okay, 74 years old, right? You still don't know what speed limit means or something. But because he really likes this car, right? And this, that he's, he, he, I noticed that on how we were just about crawling up the hill. He says, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I used to. But his car was redone and ended up it was during COVID time and things were really messed up when it came to things like that as well where you couldn't get anybody to redo your engine or this or that 
so that one person he entrusted his car to ended up with a guy that put a racing engine into his car. Okay, so anyway, he says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I used to, you know, and I with the trucks and stuff going up the hill, right? So, or anybody else, well, I've got this great engine now. <laughs> I can pass anybody. He says, I don't think that way anymore. I really need to take care of my baby here, my car. And uh, so I'm just kind of moseying along, and here I'm, I'm sitting next in the passenger seat. Well, thank God. <laughs> I think having driven uh, for so many years myself, never had an accident or anything, right? Because I'm just a very conscientious, responsible driver on the road. Okay, yeah, things may happen, this and that. Oh, they have, and somehow I. I said, it just depends who you got with you in your car. Okay. And being alert. And, okay. All right. And being behind the wheel in a proper condition. A all. Okay. Just saying. For someone like me to suddenly just become a passenger, I don't drive anymore because of my legs and my hips. I'd never know when they might just go out of socket, this or that, and then I could be really impaired to be using my legs in a proper way to maneuver a car. Yeah, I still have people who say, well, but you could, and I said, don't do that. I know myself best. Why would I put myself behind a wheel? Because you want me to? Because you need this or that? Or that, blah, 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 whatever? and put my life and other, others' lives at risk by me maybe or maybe not be able to actually drive a car properly. That's like telling a drunk, hey, it's all right, just go behind the wheel anyway. Yeah, right, yes, okay, I think I talked about this before. But as a passenger now, of course, here I'm sitting, and uh, it's not like I don't know <laughs> how to drive a car uh, and how one should drive a car. And if I don't feel comfortable next to a driver, I'll say, oh, Father, just just please. I mean, if it, if it is your will, just let me survive. If not, well, then that'll be it. But, you know, uh, I don't like to feel that way because of someone else's erratic, irresponsible driving. Even if they think, oh, it doesn't matter if I go 20 miles over the speed limit. I got this car under control. Okay. That's not, eh, okay. You know what I mean? All right. So, just saying. But, in any case, uh, we got it all done. Yes. And we had a wonderful time. Um, ended up going to, yes, the one restaurant I will still go to. Eh, because I know that they are kosher. They are, uh, and and they got the food that I like in the way that I like it. And it's the, uh, it's called the China Buffet here. Yeah, ugh, yeah. Only one that I go to. I, I don't want to spend money anywhere else. And uh, always have a great experience there. And yes, and that was my, again, if, uh, if someone else is willing to, uh, to do what you can't do anymore, one should not ever take that for granted. Uh, yes, and one contributes, uh, and what, I took my brother-in-law out to, because uh, I went between, at yeah, dinner, at that time it was dinner, and um, and also contributed some to uh, gas, yes, to gas money, that's what you do, that's just what you do, that's the right thing to do, that's what I call not abusing someone that's readily available uh, to uh, perform in the way that you can't anymore and then still get you yeah yes all right just saying all right let's get going here mm -hmm. so had a great day yesterday and uh of course, hmm. have to mention 
uh, we ended up getting uh, several bags of feed and corn and dog food. And uh, it was this big old pile of uh, bags, 50 pound bags on this cart. And and the lady, when we checked out, she says, do you need any help? We, so we were two people, older people, right? Uh, my brother-in-law still working with his hamstring uh, still, uh, and me with my back and my legs. Uh, and But we do the work, um, regardless, even though we know, right? Okay, that's going to hurt us. That's, that's, but if there's nobody else around, you're going to have to just do it anyway. Then deal with the consequences and then get better. And you, you try, right? Yes. The work still has to get done. doesn't matter how you feel. Right? What, what, what hurts you, this or that, still needs to get done because we have responsibilities here towards what here? God's creations. So that we took on, on our own, to care for, and they depend on us in many ways. So, so the lady, she, she said, a young girl, sweet, just, ugh, my gosh, she was just the sweetest thing. She said, do you need any help? You know, with, I said, my brother-in-law looked at each other, yeah, you got someone with a better back and better legs and this and that than us? Oh, please. So we walked on out there, got to the car, and here comes this young strapping guy, and I said, is your back okay? He says, oh, yeah, my back's still fine. I'm going, oh, that's wonderful. And he just took them backs and flop and flop and flop, just threw them in the car. My brother was just standing there. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, so wonderful. Young people. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's just wonderful, right? Yes. And uh, I said, oh, thank you. You know, that's so, that, that saves us some from, we have to still do this at home. But, you know. This will really help. And here, just, you could just tell us, oh, yeah, okay. Huh? Huh? Mm. I can't help it for younger, the younger generations out there that do what they do. And I don't know, do they deserve the censure? And, but the thing is, Every young person that we met yesterday, including I went to the bank and there was this young guy there and I went, man, I said, oh, your hair looks great. I said, is that natural curls? He says, yeah. yeah. So we had a nice little conversation and, you know, it just in every service that we went to and the younger people were there you know, and you're just looking going, ah, whew, ah that's so wonderful. <laughs> that's what I like. Does everybody just want to pay attention to prodigal sons and daughters out there? Ah, they are going through their difficulties to snap. There's so many wonderful young people out there who are just oof, there to do what? Make life easier for us older generation. Help out. Be respectful. Honor their elders are filial to their parents at all, right? Let's pay a little more attention to that. Yes? Okay. All right. So we are in the second book of Chronicles 13. Abijah became the new king of Judah in Jerusalem in the 18th year of the reign of King Jeroboam of Israel. He lasted three years. His mother's name was Micaiah, daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. Oh. Early in his reign, war broke out between Judah and Israel. Judah, led by King Abijah, fielded 400,000 seasoned warriors against twice as many Israeli troops. Strong, courageous men led by King Jeroboam. When the army of Judah arrived at Mount Zemaraim in the hill country of Ephraim, King Abijah shouted to King Jeroboam and the Israeli army, Listen, don't you realize that the Lord God of Israel swore that David's descendants would always be the kings of Israel? Your King Jeroboam is a mere servant of David's son and was a traitor to his master. 
Then a whole gang of worthless rebels joined him, defying Solomon's son, Rehoboam, for he was young and frightened and couldn't stand up to them. No, he was young and stupid and listened to whom? But anyway, oh, there we go. <laughs> Do you really think you can defeat the kingdom of the Lord that is led by a descendant of David? Your army is twice as large as mine, but you are cursed with those gold calves you have with you that Jeroboam made for you. He calls them your gods, and you have driven away the priests of the Lord and the Levites and have appointed heathen priests instead. Just like the people of other lands, you accept as priests anybody who comes along with a young bullock and seven rams for consecration. Anyone at all can be a priest of these no good gods of yours. I have something to say to this, but I'm not going to. We know from beforehand. Okay, I said I wasn't going to. If you listen to this carefully, and I'm just reading through it, and immediately I'm going, hmm, really? Is it always that people are going to put the responsibility on anything or this or that on someone else rather than looking up themselves and say, why am I in this position? What happened exactly? Is it really huh? someone else out there that is whatever they're doing now, ooh, is afflicting me? Or is it something that I did that we're doing within our family, within our surroundings? Hmm? In our nation. But as for us, the Lord is our God and we have not forsaken him. Only the descendants of Aaron are our priests and the Levites alone may help them in their work. Why? Well, yeah, they're realizing that now? Uh, see, it always has to come down to, someone wants to take my life. And it looks like they're stronger. Then suddenly they remember what? Hmm? You ever notice when things go bad in people's lives, suddenly they find to God? Why can't you find to God when go good, things go good? Acknowledge, well, why are things going good? And give the tribute to whom? <clears throat> As for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. Uh -uh, bah, 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 bah. They burn sacrifices to the Lord every morning and evening, burnt offerings and sweet incense, and they place the bread of the presence upon the holy table. What good does any of that do to God when he sees his people suffering out there? This is where they're constantly, again, this is where right, they are putting their concentration of doing things to please God. Is that going to please God? These offerings, this, this or that, like God sitting there like, yeah, I want your, I want your undivided devotion. Ba, 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 ba. And otherwise, I'm not going to be happy. Is that how God is? And I'll tell you what, as a parent myself, the most wonderful thing to me is when I can't be there. When I'm not around, when I can't keep a watchful eye for, uh, out for my children or grandchildren, is when someone else is doing that for me. Just as dedicated, even though. Do you know what I mean? Don't you think that as our parental God, a God that created Adam and Eve as his children, which means we're all his children, okay? These burnt offerings, this net. What does that mean? What is that? Does God really want your worship? What does God want from us? It's to care for each other. Make sure that we do the best that we can for each other. That way, one parent can't be there. We step in and we protect the children. Against what? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm just saying. What are we being told here? Oh, if you do this or that, da, 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 all in your own little corner, and then everything's going to stay fine. Here is, here is, uh, uh, what's his name? 
Rehoboam, you know, yelling out to Jeroboam, hey, would he have to do that? Would he? If he would have actually pleased his parent in heaven on taking care of the rest of the children, which, in my opinion, any of these kings should have looked at as his brothers and sisters. Oh, we already know how they treat each other. Amongst each other. For what? Station, power, money. Okay, gotcha. As soon as the parent, what? Dies. <laughs> or before that. The golden lampstand is lighted every night, for we are careful to follow the instructions of the Lord our God. Are you? But you have forsaken him. So you see, God is with us. He is our leader. His priests, trumpeting as they go, will lead us into battle against you. O people of Israel, do not fight against the Lord, God of, our, of your fathers, for you will not succeed. What did God tell this one prophet to tell Rehoboam? Don't fight your own brothers. Don't do that. Meanwhile, Jeroboam had secretly sent part of his army around behind the men of Judah to um, ambush them. So Judah was surrounded with the enemy before and behind them. Then they cried out to the Lord for mercy, and the priests blew the trumpets. The men of Judah began to shout, and as they shouted, God used King Abijah and the men of Judah to turn the tide of battle against King Jeroboam and the army of Israel. And they slaughtered 500,000 elite troops of Israel that day. What did I just say? Before I read this. So Judah, depending upon the Lord, God of their fathers, defeated Israel and chased King Jeroboam's troops and captured some of his cities, Bethel, Yeshanah, Ephron, and their su suburbs. King Jeroboam of Israel never regained his power during Abijah's lifetime, and eventually the Lord struck him and he died. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, King Abijah of Judah became very strong. He married 14 wives and had 22 sons and 16 daughters. Oh. His complete biography and speeches are recorded in the prophet Edo's History of Judah. Oh, but he won. That's the end of. But he won. Yes, he did. But doing what? I have no idea. I wasn't there. Did Jeroboam really have so many uh, extra soldiers than uh, uh, Rehoboam did? Or Abijah. Abijah, I'm sorry. Rehoboam wasn't. Did he? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just... All we hear is one side of the story here right now, right? Yes? Okay, we read more about that beforehand. So we, okay. Um, I remember reading stories about the Civil War that happened here in the United States. And I have no doubt that all around the world, when people in the same country start to fight against each other, this or even the, your neighbors, yeah, then there's going to be conflict. Hey, we just had supper last night. Now we have to kill each other. Okay, I'm just saying. And uh, the one thing that I don't understand is that what are people following when it comes down to it? How is it that as people living together, 
in the same place. And you've had, you've helped each other out. You, you grow food together. You help each other sustain, survive, this, that. And then due to the fact that someone comes along and says, well, now you have to, uh, we, 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 there is a problem. There's a conflict. Uh, where's the conflict exactly? Right? Yes. Now we're going to have to fight right, for, through this conflict. And in order to do that, we have to find each other. Well, number one, and a civil war here, uh, a, lot, a lot had to do with slavery. It wasn't just that, but a lot had to do with that. And, and that became a point uh, of, of the civil war. Well, here's my thing. Number one, if the people would have just said, this is ridiculous anyway, how come? What is it with, with not getting, not understanding? And that, you know, civil war, that's not that long ago. It's not like people didn't know about God. It's not like there weren't any Christians or other denominations of, of you believe in God and Christ and all that jazz. How is it that people, common people, again, who, what's the majority of the people out there? Kings? Ministers? Officers? Politicians, scientists, what is it? Common people. What is it that common people are being pulled into a fight with the upper class people deciding that you need to fight against something or for something that should be common knowledge that no one, no one is a slave of anyone. No one. It don't matter. And just said, well, we're not going to fight against each other for this crap. Let's just be done with it. Slaves don't exist anymore. Done. Say it out loud. Say it as it is. Why, that can't be done without, oh, you want a slave? Well, I'll kill you for it. Why, you don't want slaves? Well, I'm going to kill you for it. How intelligent does that sound? Rather than, my gosh, I could be in the shoes of a slave, then how would you feel? Shouldn't be so hard to figure that out. Yes? Yet. You've got to pick up arms. You've got to pick up this and that. To do what? For one side or the other to win. You know what? That's about the most foolish thing I've ever seen and heard out there. It's still going on. Oh, sure it is. Oh, about slaves? No, not slaves. Just in general things. That, that's it. I have no idea how foolish the common people can be. Because if you were to just say no on both sides, guess what? We would be done with all of this nonsense just saying yeah <laughs> so where are you going to put your trust hmm? where are you going to put where how are you going to discover your own heart to mind huh? that people like to talk about conscience and this everything yeah well what has that all gone out the door just because what we're, yeah, we're considered what? The caste system, right? Oh, we think it's just like still happening in India or something. Or, uh, the caste system, guess what? Upper class, middle class, low income class, then what? Poverty, right? Poverty level. What is that? Huh? Really? <laughs> just saying <laughs> you know what I found the less you own the less you have and with what you have you do the best and you make sure that you take first care of whatever you've taken on responsibility for you will never be without it you will always get the little help that you need 
and you will be there too with the little that you have to help out with, to, for someone, with someone, to someone hmm? that needs it as well. Just saying. Gotta trust Spirit World. Gotta trust our parental God. Just saying. I said it was gonna rain. Was, no, it's not gonna rain. While we're out there, it's because I'm on the road. I'm so full of myself, aren't I? It didn't rain. I'm not full of myself. I just trust a hundred percent. I believe a hundred percent. I have no doubts on where my loyalties lie and my filial piety. Da -da -da -da. And that is that. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you and I will talk to you another time.